Next, we turn to the town of Elberton, Georgia, the granite capital of the world. Elberton is famous for its production of tombstones, exporting some 250,000 tombstones every year. Oddly enough, the town that makes a living through death is also the home of what some consider the most threatening monument in America. A monument that some believe is a symbol for the coming Holocaust, promoting a depopulation effort at a massive scale. It was back in 1979 when a stranger came to Elberton, Georgia. Now, Elberton, Georgia is on the eastern part of Georgia, very close to the South Carolina border. And uh, this stranger said that uh, he was part of a secret group and they wanted to build a great granite monument. This was done by a guy who gave a pseudonym, came in, paid cash, had this company set these things up in 1980, called himself R.C. Christian. Uh, but that's not his real name. It says it right on the stones, a pseudonym. Nobody knows his real name because that isn't his real name. Nobody knows uh, who put the money up other than this fictional individual. Nobody knows what secret group he represents. Of course, Elberton uh, mines granite. They make tombstones there, uh, and they had the facilities to mine the granite. But he gave very, very specific directions as to how this was to be built, so that it would always be aligned in certain ways, so you'd always be able to see the North Star, so it would be aligned with the moon and, and with the various phases of the sun. And uh, very, very similar to the Stonehenge that they have in England, uh, so the Stonehenge was the Druidic monument. This was to be the American Stonehenge, or it's known as the Georgia Guidestones. And uh, on each one of the Guidestones is, is this message in a different language, actually eight different languages, uh, are the Ten Commandments that come from the dark side. And the first one is maintain uh, the world population at 500 million in constant balance with nature, which doesn't sound too bad until you realize that we've got over 6 billion people in the world. And if we're going to maintain the world population at 500 million in constant balance with nature, we're going to have to kill off about 90% or more of the world's population. I went there and looked at those things and said, now, hold on a minute. Today's population is 6 billion. They want to maintain humanity under one half billion. Looks like a lot of people got to die for their plan to work. Which is, by the way, the plan, as Jacques Cousteau said, we'd have to eliminate 350,000 people a day. A third of a million people a day would have to be eliminated to save Mother Earth. Now, Bill Clinton said we need to reduce the population of the Earth to one billion. There are a lot of folks who would like to reduce the population of the Earth. Aleister Crowley taught that a global massacre would be necessary to bring about the new age. He wrote, there is a magical operation of maximum importance, the initiation of a new eon. When it becomes necessary to utter a word, the whole planet must be bathed in blood. Before man is ready to accept the law of Thelema, or will, the great war must be fought. This bloody sacrifice is the critical point of the world ceremony of the crowned and conquering child as Lord of the Eon. This initiation takes place to remove Christians who are considered the primary obstacle to world unity under Antichrist. A magazine called the Omega Letter says that there is only one obstacle to world unity, Christianity. It goes on to say that Christianity claims supernatural knowledge and divine revelation and therefore should not be tolerated. Gus Hall, the former leader of the Communist Party in America said, I dream of a time when the last congressman is strangled to death on the guts of the last preacher. And since the Christians love to sing about the blood, why not give them a little of it? A New Age group calling itself Solar Questers writes, These are wondrous times because the world has gone through this terrific experience as it spins slowly back to its rightful orbit in the position that it should be in the heavens. And as this happens more and more, more comfort and well-being will come upon this world and those who hinder will be removed, liquidated. They must be wiped clean off the face of the earth. Ruth Montgomery, sometimes referred to as the Herald of the New Age, said, Millions will survive and millions won't. Those who won't will go into the spirit state because there is truly no death. 
The authors of a New Age pamphlet titled Cosmic Countdown claim to have received messages from a higher intelligence. The pamphlet says the world should be forewarned to be on the lookout for the decimation of populations. These peoples will eventually be replaced by the new root race about to make its appearance in a newly cleansed world. But perhaps the most disturbing comments come from New Age author Barbara Marks Hubbard. Researchers John Ankerberg and John Weldon report that due to her vast financial wealth and influence among leading world politicians and industrialists, she is having a major impact behind the scenes. She has been influenced by spirits for almost two decades. In her book titled Happy Birthday Planet Earth, Hubbard wrote, The choice is, do you wish to become a natural Christ, a universal human, or do you wish to die? People will either change or die, she says. That is the choice. Hubbard says, There have always been defective seeds. In the past, they were permitted to die a natural death. We, the elders, have been patiently waiting to take action to cut out this corrupted and corrupting element in the body of humanity. Hubbard's spirit guides gave her a vision of things to come. They told her that out of the full spectrum of human personality, one-fourth is electing to transcend, one-fourth is destructive, and they are defective seeds. Now as we approach the quantum shift from the creature human to the co-creative human, the human who is the inheritor of God-like power, the destructive one-fourth must be eliminated from the social body. Fortunately, you are not responsible for this act. We are. We are in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. He selects, we destroy. We are the riders of the pale horse, death. Jesus said, Yea, the time cometh, that whosoever kills you will think that he does God a service. And these things they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. But if all these things are so, what is a person to do? We ask that question of Pastor Joe Schimmel, Senior Pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California. Jesus said, He that's not with me is against me. So you could be in the New World Order side, you know, a black magician or a Satanist, or somebody that's just caught up in that lie, and you're not for Christ, you're against him. But you could also be someone who's fighting against the New World Order and think you're doing good, but refuses to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Refuses to uh, respond to the Gospel and repent of your sins and turn to Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you're under the same condemnation and the same judgment as the Antichrist in the New World Order. And sadly, there's many people today that see what's going on to a degree, only part of the puzzle, Yet they're in, in as much rebellion against God as many of these people that are in the New World Order. And my hope and my prayer is that people that see what's going on uh, would not play into Satan's hands. Because what's going to happen in the end is there's going to be many people fighting against the New World Order. And they're going to think they're going to be doing good. And Satan, I believe, in the end time is going to use that as newsreel clips for see what the Christians are doing, these crazy, these crazy people. And, uh, and Satan is going to use that actually against Christians in the very end. So we, true Christians that know Christ, need to submit to the scripture, need to realize that if God calls us to die as martyrs, we need to die as martyrs. If God calls us to escape with our families in the mountains, we need to do that. But one thing we need to make sure we don't do is we don't want to make sure we're not the ones trying to blow up the Pentagon or, you know, blow up the United Nations, because then what we end up doing is playing right into Satan's.